Hey guys, welcome to another edition of the Double Thought Show. In today's show, we will talk about Jordan Peterson punished by the Ontario court for expressing him his freedom of speech. Brett Favre allegedly withholding text messages in Mississippi welfare case. And Buccaneers quarterback Baker Mayfield's starting a court case against his father's investment firm over $12 million misappropriation, <laughs> allegedly. I already know Kara will try to roast me on that last topic, but uh, <laughs> oh well, we got to do what we got to do. Let's dive in. Showtime. Hey guys, before we start with the first topic, Jordan Peterson, I want to thank you all for checking out this show remember to like comment and of course share this video with your friends families and distract your enemies with these videos and most importantly don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below yes jordan peterson is back in the show we've talked about him before and i think this time around, sad to say, but... Let's face it, if they took care of business, I'd be out of business, you know <laughs> what I mean? <laughs> well, the court of Ontario handled his business to the point, well, he lost the court case against the College of Psycho uh, Psycho Psychologists, Psychos, which, which uh, I don't know which one it is, but... He took a loss. He took a loss over this one, guys. Let me share the article with you. Ontario courts rules against Jordan Peterson and upholds social media training order. We talked about this to be exact. I had to go back, RJ. Yeah. I had to go back. How many months ago do you think we first dove into this topic? I want to say five months ago, six months ago. Wow. It's even more. I uh, got to zoom in. Seven. All right. Seven months ago, we talked about this case where basically they demanded a retraining for social media, uh, social media retraining. Imagine that. What is a social media retraining? According to the college, it was not saying stuff that allegedly they might not agree with. Be professional. Don't say anything. RJ, do you remember this case? Yes, I do. And... It seems like show, social media training is stay quiet. Don't run your mouth. It's something to me that is only happening because uh, Jordan Peterson, in my opinion, is talking things that do not necessarily align with the, the, the paradigm the belief paradigm of colleges and schools in this particular time that we're living in. Because oftentimes what we see here, and we discuss it a lot, KR, is that do you see that the people will they will look at the they will look at the someone that is saying things that align with the paradigm, or at least you can even take it with a news channel, right? So if there's a channel that's uh, pro or against the topic if you're on a pro channel and you're talking pro that topic then it's great oh you can talk reckless no one they will call you passionate but if you talk the same way against the existing paradigm then you will be regarded as a rebel and reckless and things of that nature and it's no secret that jordan peterson is opposed to the uh the, the the way of thinking the, the 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 way of thinking that 
let's say in general universities uh, in Canada uh, have um, adopted. And actually that was why he became big in the first place because he went against them, but in a well-spoken manner. Mm -hmm. KR, they, they've tried to trap this man in countless of debates, but this man knows how to talk uh, and knows how to debate. Uh, so you can't, if you, uh, so you can't uh, corner him. But he's not trapped. But Wait. what? I was about to say he's not trapped in the R. Kelly song <laughs> yeah. in the closet. Yeah. But in this case, when you go to court, unfortunately, well, unfortunately, fortunately, unfortunately, it depends on how you look at it, of course. You can you can talk very well, but on the other side of the courtroom, you also have people that can talk very well. Actually, people who 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 have made it their profession to talk well. And then the court would need to decide. And in this case, they decided against him because apparently they believe that he talked, uh, that he, he, he was not sensitive. He didn't show compassion and sensitivity towards. No, that's not what they, th they think. Actually, that what they actually said is we, we, we agree with the college with regards to him not being professional. Um, professional uh, uh, based on the rules of the college. Then the question is, what are the rules of the college? And Jordan points out, and we're going to play a couple of videos about this, fair use. Um, he points out that these rules are, have never been put on paper, black or white. So that means that in a sense, a college could, according to Jordan Peterson, a college could create a, any any rule off the cuff and say you're not abiding by it. Please, if you don't do this, so the retraining, you might lose your license, which is Gotta ask yourself. I mean, it makes sense if it's written down, but if it's not, then everyone can be a target. And the yeah. the thing I think, which is, um, and and I'm gonna play this uh, video, his response to this, real quick in a second. I think one thing I've I've, I've when I when I was reading about this and and also the 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 outcome of the court case. I think your uh, uh, Ontario court slash Canadian court is setting a real, a really weird precedent. Because if a professional cannot cannot say anything, because uh, he also criticizes um, Justin Trudeau. If a professional, but that's one of the case, one of the points in his case. If you cannot criticize anyone that's in place, th th that would mean that anyone who's a professional cannot say anything because then you can be fired or, in this case, asked to retrain and pay for your own retraining up until they agree that you're, you have been retrained. So you could be doing a retraining for 10 years paying it out of your own pocket and without them ever saying you, you've been retrained. It's like yeah. uh, retraining of the brain. That's almost impossible. That would mean a lot about how everything will continue to progress or degress in Canada, depending on how you look at this. But... Yeah. Yes. I, I don't know. I don't yeah, know. So it seems weird to me if if what's jo what Jordan Peterson is saying that the rules weren't on the uh, if they weren't written down on paper. I mean, of course, that's his point of view. I don't know if, they, for example, they send a video out 
with information, but let's say I mean, maybe it's not clearly defined. That's yeah, what but 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 it's so that's very important when you are when you are uh, claiming something as an organization. So you're claiming that there's a policy, etc. Uh, as a lawyer, I can tell you that you need to have it written down on paper or at least, let me put it this way, it needs to be the rules or what you expect need, need to be clear for the subjects that would need to comply with, with these rules. So in this case, the professor, for the professors, for example. Uh, so it, it, should, it has to be clear. Why does it have to be clear? Because you need to have legal certainty Everyone needs to, it's, it's in the interest of a state, in the interest of an organization to maintain peace. And how do you maintain peace? One of the ways to maintain peace is to have legal certainty. That is to say, it needs to be clear what the rules are and what the consequences are for violating those rules. And of course, you, when a rule is violated, you have to uh, enforce it as well. Now... I, it's a bit weird if I have to believe what, what, uh, what, uh, Jordan Peterson is saying that the rules weren't written down. So basically they just invented the rules basically is what he's basically saying. Uh, then I, I, I find it weird that the judge would side side with the school. I don't have all the facts and circumstances of the cases, but it's 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 weird. I mean, I mean, the association has rules. It's it's an association, not a school. The association has rules, but they have rules relating to the professional conduct. Yeah. According to their own website, then I'll I'll share the screen real quick. This is these are the as they call it, standards of professional conduct. Mm -hmm. They have accept, uh, acceptance of regulatory authority of the college, compliance with statutes uh, and regulations re relevant to the provision of psycholo uh, psychological services, meeting clients' needs. There are a couple of specific ones. This is general conduct, supervision, competence, Representation of services, consent to services, privacy of personal information, records uh, and rec record keeping, assessment and intervention, fees, contract for services, impairment, professional objectivity, harassment, abuse, and relationships, use of technological provision or psychological services. So this is probably what they used, professional objectivity, um, and the, the funny thing is that according to Jordan what what is still quite kind of an interesting thing is that the the court sided with with the college knowing that all of the people who 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 uh, so so the, the cases they took to court the the complaints were according to jordan entered by people who claimed to be his clients all over the world none of them were his clients so which is basically the complaint is based according to him on a false statement you can ask yourself if the first thing you do is already false why take the other the complaint and proceed with in the investigation as a college but so okay so just to be clear the college started the case against jordan peterson for infringing infringing Rules and conducts placed by the Association of Psychologists. Are you asking me? That's a question. Yeah, it's a question. Oh, uh, 
it because was Jordan just Lewis just just to have to. They okay. they sent him a letter basically telling him you have to abide by uh, by what about what we are saying because otherwise you will lose your accreditation. Yeah, but you went to you showed a page of an association. Yes, that was the association of psychologists. Yeah, yeah Ontario. Okay. Let me, let me school. Let me. I'll, I'll share. So it. so my question is, how does that relate to the case? Who who brought forward the case? That that. The the rules, let's say, the, the 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 rules that were or were not infringed. Was it the college? Yeah. Send them a letter saying you have to you have to do a re a, 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 a retraining social media retraining. Yeah. He was he didn't agree with them and then he went to court. Yeah. Jordan did. Jordan did. Yes. Yeah. Because... Understand that. that that's clear to yeah. me. You showed. I said, the school. The school, the school, and you said no, it's not the school, it's an association. Yeah, it's an association. Yeah. That's association of psychologists. College of Psychologists of Ontario, yes. A association of Colleges of Ontario. College of Psychologists of Ontario. Okay. But the case wasn't against that association. It's a governing it's a governing body for psychologists, practitioners, psychologists, yeah. and associates in Ontario. Yeah. They are the ones who sent him. They okay, so they send the letter, not the school. Which school? You said the college sent them a letter. College of Psychologists of Ontario. That's the name of the association. So it's called the O. No, it's called the Association of Colleges. It's called the College of Psychologists <laughs> of Ontario. No, man. Dude, what the heck? That's an association. The association. An association cannot. You need an association. I don't know how it is in Canada. But usually you have to it's say the governing body. That's the yeah. name of the. Uh, it's a. That's the governing body. It's the name is Psy College, College of Psychologists of Ontario. What the is heck? it? Association? Yes or no? It's a governing body. It's a governing college. body. So it's not an association. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. Okay. So okay, it's a governing body. So the, the govern. It's not. So this is what they say. This is literally what they say. Yeah. On their website. Let me let me share my screen again. They say, let me zoom in a little bit. The college is not a university, school, or community college. It's a its mandate is to protect public interest yeah. by monitoring, regulating the practice of psychology. Clear. So it's a governing body called a college, but it's not a college. It's not a college, no. This is this is a I mean. This is like, hey, it's Canada, man. What can you do? Okay, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I just because uh, you, yeah, that that's what confused me. Okay, but back to back to the back to the 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 topic. The question is, you 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 made a second point. It's a very legitimate point. If the uh, and it's a question you asked, if the petitioners or the the witnesses. That's called the witnesses who came forward claiming they were clients of Jordan, were never clients of him in reality. So basically they lied. Why did they proceed with the case? So what you do in a court case is so each party, the par a party can bring forward. Why did why, why did why did the college decided to proceed with the investigation telling him, OK, you have to do the retraining. That's what I said. Yeah. So not the case, the lawsuit. Okay. But the court, the court reaffirmed. They that, reaffirmed the, the, yeah, what okay. the college did. Okay. Yes. It's so, kind of crazy to me. But so, okay. okay. So that's, so that's what I'm about to go into now. Okay. When let's say 10 people come forward, I'm just giving, going to give an example. Mm -hmm. If 10 people come forward and they claim something, Let's say they claim that, and this, let's just use this example. They claim that Jordan Peterson did something that was not ethical or against the code of conduct for psychologists. Okay. And when they investigate and they, they realize that eight of the 10 were lying, but two of the 10 weren't, they're not going to throw away the case. But so 10 unless. Out of 10. 
So unless 10 out of 10 lied, then they could not, then I, I would agree with you. But if 9 out of 10 lied and 1 didn't, you can okay. still proceed with the investigation. According, according to Jordan, none of the people who entered their complaints are his clients. Um, clients, And they claim to be, though. So or that's are a, related to yeah. his clients. clients okay. somewhere, somewhere. If that's the case, the only logical explanation, KR, is that they wanted to do this all along <laughs> and they just... <laughs> <laughs> because this guy be, up for failure. <laughs> because on. because KR, if you think that if you think that as Jordan Peterson, you can go against the green and nothing will happen to you. Ugh. Does it work like that? So um, although I have to say I do agree with him with a lot of the points he's he, he made. It's just logical thinking. If you are it's just like you go to a game and you go to a Cowboys game in an Eagles jersey, then <laughs> call the ambulance. <laughs> you are you're it's it's not so you might be a good person, you might be you you might know more than the other people, but you are in a territory that doesn't want you there. It's just like this, it's the same with Jordan. So it's like they, they wanted to start an investigation in the first place and they were waiting for someone. And KR, one, one, one more thing that you're, you're not taking into account. When someone, let's say when, they, when the 10 people came forward, mm. let's say in, in our example, 10 people came forward. And when the 10 people came forward, they didn't know whether or not uh, they were uh, legitimately patients of or, or clients of, of uh, Jordan Peterson in the first place. So only by starting the investigation can they start acquiring information that would lead them to okay. those, to those uh, results. And mm -hmm. while do, conducting the investigation, they might find other things and you know, to 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 use against them, and I believe that's so. That's that's what happened. It's just like in some jurisdictions, if you say that someone has a a firearm in the house illegally, or that someone has um, drugs in the house illegally, you can if if and the the that in itself is enough in certain jurisdictions to enter into someone's home and search everything. And sometimes, <laughs> if you believe, I mean, as lawyers, sometimes you get, you get a, you get a suspicion. You can never prove it, but sometimes you, it seems as though they claim that just to get in the house. And when they get in the house, they, they go find, look for them. They find yeah. that stuff, yeah. So it's it's uh, but but yeah, they they, they were eyeing, they were eyeing Jordan, yeah, eyeing. and oh, it's, it's wow. clear he's been controversial, yeah, for a very long time now. Let's take a quick look at what he has to say about this, and then we we close up this uh, this topic. <laughs> Fair use. Yeah, but good. You know, I mean, I didn't look. The court decision was worse than I thought it would be. I was already pessimistic. I figured the court would take the coward's way out and basically upgrade the college for procedural inadequacy. Because one of the things the college did, which is just beyond comprehension as far as I'm concerned, is pursue these complaints that were uh, put forward by people distributed all over the world who then claimed in writing falsely to be my clients. When in he didn't say every single one of them. Okay, maybe he didn't say every single one of them. As, as a lawyer, I, I, you're trained to hear. Know, is it, he didn't say every single one of them. But yeah, proceed. Lawyer, lawyer talks. Or was that? Yeah, okay. Think that, let's continue. 
fact, they were never my clients. And not only were they not my clients, they had nothing to do with anyone who was ever a client of mine. And so I figured at least the court would say, well, you know, of course you have the right to police professionals because you're a professional governing body, but they didn't even do that. They just basically said, well, of course you have the right to freedom of speech, except when it comes to, let's say, political opinions. So, you know, then what right do you have at all? And, you know, it's terrible, Michaela, because I know... Perf That's, by the way, a good question. If you don't cannot express yourself politically on any platform, can you actually express yourself in private as well? That's the big question. Well, we can ask Fresh and Fit that. But I believe that what we can, what uh, we have to take into account is that uh, in theory, everything is great. In theory, everything is great, Kiara. But in reality, in reality, you need to, <laughs> it's, we have an illusion of what freedom of speech is. And the court and the a, a country can limit your freedom of speech if their motive is, if there's enough motive. Let's say it's a reasonable motive to do so. It's in the benefit of uh, the, the peace within a society, those type of things. So We've seen that lately. We've seen that lately, but I think in, that... In a certain continent. In a certain continent. <laughs> and it's not... It's, it's what you wouldn't expect, but... Uh... Yeah. So I think that... So I think that the... the uh, yeah, so I think that the... Uh, lost my train of thought. Yeah, yeah, so the freedom of speech is is a is not what it's what people make it out to be, but in Jordan's case, they just want him to shut up. And yeah, I think you have you have to remember as well that the the lawyer, the judge is also a person, and the judge will look at the case as objectively as possible, you hope. But that doesn't mean that the, no matter what anyone says, it doesn't mean that their underlying beliefs and norms and values can have an influence on the decision. You, you don't know the daughter or, or son or child is of the of the judge perfectly well from talking to many physicians physicians in particular but also lawyers and psychologists that no one in canada arguably and this is also extremely strange it's surreal there's no one in canada except me that's actually in a position to fight this because it's hyper expensive and i don't know if my insurance will cover it it's hyper expensive it's stressful, it's complex, it's time consuming. It could involve the uh, suspension of my license. Um, and there's not really anything that, that can be done to me that's a threat. I'm not serving as a clinician. I don't have a practice anymore because that became impossible, even though I love doing it. And I'm also not very happy about that. So I'm like the person who can do this. And Canadians have no idea to what degree professionals in Canada are now required not to say what they think or to lie outright. So for example, therapists are required by law to lie about, let's say, the gender identity of minors. And so for me, especially on the therapy side, if, if you're required by law and by your professional organization to lie cowardly, you're done as a therapist because the only thing you've got as a therapist is honesty. That's it. Honesty is what's curative. So. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy, man. It's crazy, but yeah, I mean, if there are rules and you're working for a certain place or you fall under a certain organization or, or, or a governmental body and that can give you argu arguably certain benefits, you need to adhere to the rules as well. And that will always be the case 
whatever your your whatever platform you're on, you need to adhere to them. And if you don't agree, it's best for you to to move on. He said that there are, there are other jurisdictions there are other jurisdictions that are willing to give him that psychologist uh, pass. Mm, so well. when they revoke it here, he can open another one someplace else. So yeah, I think he's good, man. The only thing is that uh, he's saying that the the court case is expensive. Yeah. I think um, I think so. Yeah, I, I do agree with you on that. And 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 additionally, I think I think he's and that's uh, I think that's basically if you watch enough Jordan Peterson videos, um, he's more worried about the 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 future what this means for other people in either the same or similar uh, jobs yeah well we already knew that Canada was lost but I didn't it's... I didn't know that but okay good to well, know well you didn't know that you don't read what I read. <laughs> anyway, can you read, RJ? <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, anything else to add relating to this topic? Because we went over the time we already asked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, let's uh, let's move on to the next one. The next topic we're going to discuss today is. Oh, I wanted to say the the shooter. <laughs> but we already had 30 marks. So yes, the slinger of balls. The NFL legend. I thought I was talking about Nick Cannon, but no, he's slinging this different things. He's not slinging balls. <laughs> He's also a shooter, a club shooter. <laughs> Yo, drive by. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, he doesn't run. You don't want us to end up like, like, uh, like him. Please subscribe. Yeah, please we subscribe. Need help. We need your help. Please press on the like button as well while you're doing it. You wanna end oh up? My God. Oh man! Anyway, yes, Brett Favre. <laughs> Brett Favre has been in a lawsuit since last year. His involvement in that lawsuit resulted in another lawsuit with him trying to sue Pat McAfee, Shannon Sharp. And a couple of other people, uh, other people. We did a quite extensive cover of this uh, of this topic when it happened, guys. We have a playlist that's called <laughs> "Press for Off Against the World." <laughs> <laughs> a Mississippi quagmire gone left. That's actually the name of the. <laughs> Maybe I should change that name. Anyway, so basically, Brett Favre and uh, Pat McAfee ba resolved their issues. Pat McAfee admitted that what he said was a joke, even though he's been saying it for a long time, and that Brett, he didn't, he has no knowledge of Brett's. Mississippi case, which he's also been saying. So what admission that is, I have no idea. But here we are. Last week or one of the past weeks, we covered Brett Favre trying to remove himself from the Mississippi case. And the judge said, the judge said, we're not going to do it. Our lawyer over here explained why he didn't do it. 
from a lawyer's perspective, why shouldn't he remove it? It makes total sense what you explained during that show, RJ. Yeah. But here we are again talking about Brett Favre. I thought we can we could have closed that part, but uh, we are already we are back here talking about him, and this time around, the guy doesn't stop. He's a gift that keeps on giving. I'm not going to compare it to any other things that keeps on giving because that I, I definitely will get sued. <laughs> <laughs> so this is where we are now. Brett Favre is accused by NBC Sports. Let me scroll up a little bit. A little bit to the left. Pro Football Talk. On... August the 21st <laughs> at 8 a, 43 p.m. He's a very litigious person. We need to we need to <laughs> make sure because sometimes they change these titles as well. Actually. They can edit it. So I gotta make sure that that Brett's lawyers know that this is the our source. Brett Favre is accused of withholding text messages in Mississippi welfare, welfare litigation. Yeah. Imagine that, RJ. Yeah. Here we are. Here we are. I, the, I don't know what he's withholding because the other ones were crazy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it's more a volume thing than... than, than uh, it's more a volume thing than it is a... than it is a... Um, a... what he said thing. So... He, the first the couple first couple of messages were already wild but there weren't too much and he was claiming that the the stories are at least the the whatsapps are being taken out of context and things things of that nature so I'm guessing that the more text they have the more context they would be able to create the question is however what do these text messages say is that is that revealed kr no the thing is this. This is what the M MDHS is alleging, according to this article by NBC Sports. Can you guys read it? The M M MDHS alleged you, in a Monday... Can you um, zoom in a bit? It's zoom readable. Bit. It's, it's readable, but just to make it a bit more readable. For all the blind people out yeah. there. Let's help. Yeah. Thank you. The M M uh, MDHS alleged in a Monday filing that far failed to answer any of this discovery regarding text messages exchanged with others in alleged welfare fund scam, despite being identified as the sender or recipient of uh, on the face of these texts, Farf objected and claimed that he could not verify many of these te text messages <laughs> authenticity. <laughs> and it, they described this they argue this in a 14-page document. Incredible. The discovery is a normal part. Yeah, do you guys know what a discovery is? I hope at least you know what it is. Um, but yeah, uh, he is specifically accused of failing to surrender text messages. In many cases, text messages are incredibly useful to, uh, uh, to the effort of deserting the truth. Yeah, people tend to be less guarded in such communications, guys. What do we said in the previous show? Don't send text messages. Yeah, don't but... call as well and say, "Hey, this is this is Brad Farf here." Now I'm gonna snitch on myself on the phone. Yeah, it's just like the um, take a quick detour. The Travis Rudolph incident former nfl play i believe he played in the nfl as well who he was at home had an argument with his girlfriend his dad girlfriend the girlfriend messaged her brother to come and take care of him literally it's written it was written down the brother went to to get three other people they came to his house they started a conversation he saw that they had firearm yeah you gotta be very specific. They came in and wife wife hitters. Yeah. And shirtless. And shirtless. <laughs> yeah. So they came here to fight. 
They're in, in, in undershirts. Let's call them undershirts. <laughs> and you know that when someone presents them, when, when someone presents them, uh, themselves at, uh, when people present themselves at your house at night in shirtless, undershirts or shirtless even, shirtless even, and you can see things shining on their waist. Ooh. You, you know that something was up. So the guy went in, got his shiny object, and illuminated the place 37 <laughs> times. <laughs> yeah. KR, come on, man. Let, let there be light. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let it be light. Parted ways. Yeah. And, and he and, anyway. Yeah. And and he did that. Police went, police they they and the police found the car eventually they found them what's the why do i tell this story when the police went and checked the phone of the woman none of the texts could be found but it was only because they could find the texts on the other guy's phone i don't know if it was the brother or one of the friends of the brother that's how they were able to gather the information and confirm that she indeed called upon her brother to take care of business, to find a permanent solution for a temporary problem. So what, I, what that, that, that just goes to say how sometimes... You have text messages, but you need to, uh, to, to get back to the FARF case. You need to be, sometimes you think, oh, I'm going to delete the messages on my phone. But I think it's so more, much complicated. It's, it's more complicated than that. And sometimes, especially if you're not aware, sometimes people are like ostriches. They think that if they can't see it, then it's not there. Mm. But I know if, some people like that. But if they find it, and in this case, apparently they're saying that they did find it and are even claiming that uh, Brett Favre withheld the texts, which means that as opposed to him failing to hand over the phone would be something that could have been done unwillingly as well or, or, or unintentionally. When you say that someone withheld the text, there is an element of intention there. And if that's the case, it, the, the consequences can be more harmful for Brett Favre and his statements. Imagine if these texts, uh, we don't know what these texts are, but we've discussed the previous text already. Those were crazy. Just as an example, guys, in one of these texts, he said, is there any way the media can find out where the money came from and how much? That's what he sent to the, the, the correspondent. Uh, I think it's one of the leading. Well, the person he sent it to was convicted for, for fraud. Yeah. So... I think she got one year or two years or something like that. But the, the, that's the, the message that was sent. And imagine yeah. if there are more missing. Uh, I don't think the, the missing ones are the... the ones that can close the case for them. But, okay, let's see. Let, let's see what they can find and what yeah. they cannot find. Yeah, well, if he, he's saying that he didn't do anything wrong, that he requested transfers and the trans transfers were granted by the Mississippi uh, MDH MDHS S. but MHDS MHDS but if MDHS. these if, if if from the text they can extract that he let's say he had an he had a close connection with them you know, text messaging and things of that nature, then that can be very harmful because it can function as proof that he was aware that of the of the wrongdoings and decided to participate with the wrongdoings the purposefully and intentionally. So yeah. So 
it's it's time will tell time will tell because uh, what what this means will mean for the other lawsuit he has going with uh, with Shannon Sharp yeah yeah Shannon yeah. Sharp just signed two new deals will Shannon have to part ways with his funds in order to pay off the lawsuit Nah, man. I think that I'm not saying that Brett has the funds, but I'm saying with the missing funds, if someone can locate the missing funds, the case can be paid for with the people's money just as it was intended to buy. He paid back. He paid already a part back, so... Yeah, this is you still um it still didn't pay interest. The interest, yes. That's two hundred thousand, I think, something like that. Yeah. What it's two hundred thousand. Two hundred, two hundred to three hundred. It's two hundred to three thousand more than he should have had. Oh yeah, that's true. That's true. Well, we'll see. We'll see, man. I don't understand why he doesn't pay back. If he wants his name removed from the case, why because, does because the case will go on even if he pays it back. The, the case will go on for sure because it's not a criminal. It's it's if there was wrong wrongdoing, then the the court will end. It, the, the the best case scenario is that the court will say, "Yeah, we determine." So let's say if you pay now, they the you would you would still remain in the case, and at the end of the case, the court might say, "Okay, we acknowledge that at least we establish that money has been misappropriated and that." Brett Favre has um, is guilty of guilty is a criminal court is um, there's enough that there's enough proof that he's been involved in the planning etc. So based on that, we will we we will oblige him to pay back ten thousand for example or a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand. Uh, and as we have already established that he paid it he doesn't need to pay anything else you know something of that nature but the court the case will need to reach a conclusion now well we'll keep you guys up to date on this case brett good luck because andrew luck you will need yes yes nice <laughs> Yes, guys. Uh, with that being said, before we proceed with the third and final topic, one topic that I know KR will try to use to roast me and uh, bring me back to the to the painful times of uh, being a Browns fan. But remember, before we proceed, guys, uh, and if you can help me. Protect me. Protect my emotions. Subscribe to the channel. Like the video. Share it with your friends, your family, and of course your enemies. And don't forget to comment as well. Because when I have to rewatch this, it would be easier to watch knowing that some of you guys stuck around and supported our channel while KR is trying to break me down. It is what it is. It is what it is. Let's start. <laughs> Final topic. Shake and bake. Shake and bake. Baker Mayfield. Legend. College legend. College dancer. Yes, yes. Everyone has seen him dancing before his, yeah, before his <laughs> draft. He danced in his draft as well. Then he went on the field in the NFL and started dancing too much. He couldn't throw the ball anymore. People now he started to pull him uh, from the dance floor. <laughs> <laughs> they pulled him to, from the dance floor. Yes. Because he couldn't, he couldn't see any balls reaching his wide receivers. Guys, as RJ already said, it's his boy. 
RJ, show them. <laughs> show them the Funko Pop. I know what you're talking about, man. <laughs> you're gonna do it. You're gonna do it like that? Okay, okay. Don't worry, don't worry, guys. I can show you the Funko Funko Pop. Yes. Hey. Oh, yes, and that's it. That's when the times were good at Baker's Mayfield home. That's when he was getting paid. Actually, he probably got some proceeds from this. I did it. Oh, no, he no, did. He did. Yes, yeah, he yeah. did. Because probably his did. name is on it. Yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah so yeah. basically, I thought, I thought when, just so you know, when... So you know I was the one who gave him that. So. Basically, there is a clip out there in the channel where he he it's gonna be released either this week or next week. But we have to add a show also before two shows where he references the the fact I set him up, yeah, to be a Browns supporter. And I thought I was buying in low, guys. I thought I was buying when the stock was low, uh, and he cash out the when the stock was high. But the stock only got lower. He bought. He thought he bought a dip. Well, he bought. He bought. He bought at a peak, <laughs> and it went only south after. <laughs> the, point, the price of signing people. People went to fifty. Price of signing people with fifty losses. Yeah. Now uh, former people with fifty losses. Watson. He's he's been exonerated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. don't have him go to <laughs> massage parlors. <laughs> Keep him away from. <laughs> stay away from the masseuse. Hey, hey, don't introduce him to New England's owner as well. <laughs> the New England's owner, what? What's up with that? Oh, don't you know? No, don't you know? No. So, um, Robert Kraft. Robert Kraft. Got in uh, well, he got caught up in a in a sting operation. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh man, <laughs> oh, everything comes together, man. Let's uh, let's proceed with the topic. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is <all> right. <laughs> 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 Oh my god. That's why I said keep them keep them from away from each other. He got <laughs> charged. He judge charges in a in a sting. Batman and Robin. Batman and Robin, man. That that would be crazy. But bring it back, shake a big. 12 million is missing. Mm. Or let's at least Baker wants to know where 12 million. Of his, in, of his investment went. According to NBC Sports again, Baker Mayfield says litigation over missing 12 million was a long time coming. Mm -hmm. Baker has been working very hard the last four years. A lot of he's been in a lot of ads. A lot more ads than yes, he, he has more ads than he has wins. <laughs> I know you, you're trying to do your own boy dirty, man. Come not on. my boy, man. I'm not. <laughs> he's not, no, he's not your boy. I'm not, anyway, he's not my boy. Man. But he he's oh man, this is this this must hurt, RJ, because if if really the the money disappeared. It's at his peak. <laughs> yeah. is, so, so basically, he's, yeah. he's, his stock has been going down. Time is, that mm. money, he's not going to make it up anymore. Yeah, and this is he's in a one year. He's, he has one year in his in his contract, right? Yeah, I think he has a one year contract with the Bucks, right? With now. the Bucks, and he's a starter. But for I mean, how long? He needs to. How <laughs> many interceptions? He's gonna <laughs> before he's sitting the bank. Well, we're talking about the same team that used to have Jamais. 
<laughs> well, well, but the thing is, J- Jamais, Jamais, Jamais had West, 30 for 30. He had 30, 30 <laughs> touchdowns and 30 interceptions. That's different if you have 30 interceptions and eight touchdowns. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. But, but yeah, we'll see. But maybe he would need, he might have to uh, play for his life if uh, things continue like this. But, but yeah. The... Maybe this is this Kobe moment. You might be right, RJ. Because, I mean, it, it hurts because, guys, uh, just just to give you a bit more insight in the case, he is suing May Wood. They, they are called like uh, Cam Wood Capital Group and Cam Wood. Ventures. Cam Wood, uh, it's uh, six companies. Uh, uh, among them, Cam Wood Capital and Cam Wood Investment uh, v- uh, Ventures L- L- uh, Ventures LP. Mm-hmm. Those two were founded by his father, and his brothers is also working for those firms. Mm. So it's a family feud now. Family affair. It's family affair. Where's imagine, Steve Harvey when you need him? Imagine if you give your mommy. I'm not talking about your your sugar mama. I'm talking about your mama. You give her ten dollars. Hold this for me, ma. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. You come back, mama. Where's my money? I don't know. Mama, where's my money? Look in the corner. Maybe it's in that corner. Then you take a look in that corner. <laughs> you're, you're looking for it. You're trying to find it. Nothing. Just know it's a trap. Yeah, man. Your, your mom might be pointing to you. She might say it's right there, pointing at the, the coffee table. You turn around, look at the coffee table. All you see is some pieces of aluminum foil on the table. <laughs> like, what the hell is this? Hey, but, it's tough. Yeah. Uh, but you, you see that a lot, Kara. You see that a lot um, when people have uh, money and they try to. Sometimes it's, it's, they, they they don't go to the big investment firms, or they always try to keep the money in rotation, right? So they and it's, of course you, you would say, yeah, you know, I have family, I can keep it in the family. That way, everyone wins. You know, I can support my family and everyone eats. Everyone eats. Well, this is also what happens a lot of times when you put money in people who perhaps have never managed money before, or maybe they have, but because they think that you're their son. They do. They do not. You know that they have more leave, uh, leeway. Their son or brother. And yeah, I agree. Baker's trying to figure out uh, where his money is in order to know how hard he has to play this season. The thing about this KR is that the company would need to have the investment company would need to have a very clear record of everything. Uh, where the money is, and actually, they should know. They should. They should know it. It's just the the, the bookkeeping should be. The record should be so up to date that as soon as the question is asked, they they can provide the information. So the fact that they can do this and they're an investment firm, which means they manage money. That's what they do. If they do not, if they cannot do it. Maybe the only money they have been managing was Baker's money. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, whose fault is that? Whose responsibility is that? I mean, here at the Double Touch, we always talk about this, right? About people not making the right choices, the vetting. I think if you look at this, you, you might be right. Maybe sometimes you shouldn't 
keep it in the family. Even though you want your family to eat. Before yeah. you know, your family will turn into crocodiles and yeah. eat you. Yeah. Go eat your money in this case. I think it was um, not Brandon Marshall, but Chad. No, not Chad. What's the other guy's name? Chad, on... Chad is very yeah, not not Chad with the, with the money. Not Chad, I forgot his name. The I forgot his name. But one of the other man. No, no, he what, he's now on the pivot. So you have together with Ryan Clark, you have forgot the name. But the pivot is uh, let me see. We have Ryan Clark, Fred Taylor, and Channing Crowder. Yeah, Channing, Channing Crowder. So Channing Crowder was saying that when he gets approached by people, he just with for asking for money, he just said, "Okay, great. I want to invest. I want to help. Give me your business plan." They never come back. I mean, it makes sense, right? <laughs> Let me help you invest. Invest in what? I got a call once from a friend that lives in a Latin American country. And he was, uh, he was like, yo, I have this plan. It's a great plan. Oh, man, it's some fruit. You don't know. I said, I don't know the fruit. Oh, the fruit is so good. You can make juice out of it and you can sell it. Whole plan, but all we need is capital. I said, okay, great. Um, send, send me the business plan. It's been five years, man. You know what the fruit is, right? What? The fruits of your labor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> that's the fruit. <laughs> it's the it, it will give you juice, him yeah. juice for the last of his life. No, yeah. Just and it's like, yeah, you want to help, you want to inv not help, you want to invest. You yeah. want to invest, but they they gotta have a plan, man. It's it's I mean, maybe they had a plan, and then they the thing is always and that's with investments, right? Um, African investment can go wrong. The only thing basically what uh, a firm can do is hatch their bets, making sure that the chances of it going wrong mm -hmm. is minimized. What you get is with a lot of people who don't have experience or are, in a sense, they have the, the, the moment of hubris, they might go make decisions without vetting the investment. Because we've seen it a lot of times with, with a lot of athletes. It's always when they are they have either a, a, a partner in investment, a lot of times these guys invest in 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 things that don't make sense. If you if you look at the numbers, you buy a company that's been losing money for eight years and then you think you can turn it around. Yeah. The company happens to be the company that's owned by your, your business partner's brother. But you didn't vet it because you gave him all the... You didn't have to look at it. He, he is responsible for your investments. I think that happened. In this case is, uh, from the top of my head, it was a very no, well-known NBA player who had that problem. Yeah. They, the guy invested, his business partner invested in a company that was either from a family member or it was his own. 800,000. Gone. <laughs> hey, it's like, it's, yeah, a magician that only went to school for the first half of the year. <laughs> you can only let things disappear. <laughs> Yo. Yo, this is that, that that might be that might be a, a, num, a name for a playlist. Yeah. Halfway yeah. magicians. <laughs> yeah. I can never make him reappear. I, I can make him disappear, but uh <laughs> well it disappears. Our niche our niche our niche is in making things disappear. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you it will come back. Yeah. I have to learn that trick yet, but may, maybe one day, yeah, yeah. One day. But Still yeah, practicing. It's tough, man. It's tough. I, I, it, it's, it's, I like Baker as a person. As a, as a player, he's not, he's not that guy. He's underwhelming, yeah. 
But also yeah. due, due to his size, right? He's not a he's not a tall guy, so that's always yeah. a disadvantage when you're in the NFL. Yeah, but uh, there are except there are exemptions. Tell me. Well, I want to say his name now. <laughs> Who? Uh, Russell Wilson. <laughs> I think Russell is taller than him, though. Yeah, but he's also short and QB. He's a he's a short QB. Yes. Russell is. I think they're the same size, Marna. Baker, five, but ten. and Baker may feel also five ten. I think also my five ten. I don't know. I think so. Or maybe taller. Oh my God, Baker he's... is six one. I told you he's taller. Oh yeah. So my God. <laughs> so it's not the size. It's, it's not the it's... <laughs> size. He just sucks. No, he, he just he's just too. Triggered all the time. He just wants to show throw immediately. He's not calm. Five eleven. Wilson is five eleven. Anyway, but, but, it's Wilson. Not that six. Uh, but Wilson is Wilson is calm. Like he's smooth. He gets the ball. Was, he steps out. Was, was. Yeah, Russell. Yeah, he, what? He's, what? No, no, he is. He is. He yes, yeah, yeah. No, no, he is. He receives the ball. Steps out of the pocket smoothly. Waits. He sees he the people it. come. He doesn't do anything. He just rolls down. He's smooth, man. He's, he can't get it. <laughs> You're talking about 2012 for us, man. 2014 loss. Like these days, he sees the tackle. No, he's still, man. He's still, he's smooth. He sees the tackle. He watches them. He doesn't do anything. He just waits for the impact. Yeah. So this is just... <laughs> that's why well, I said. That's why I said I don't want to say it now. <laughs> you said, you told but you, me. But you, but, okay, okay. I have to give it to you. You were right. Yeah. Russ is. A small, a smaller sized QB that was very successful in his time. Yeah, yeah. you might be. It's a skill thing. It's not. It's not maybe his height. Michael Vick was also short, right? Or not? No, Michael Vick. Michael Vick was about, I think six, six three or something like that. All right, all right, cool. Now, nah, man, but no. what did you say? I said Michael doesn't look that small. All right, all right. Michael Vick is. Uh, oh, Michael Vick is six, six, six zero. I told you. Enough. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> hey, you've been watching the game more longer than I, man. Come on. But do I, do I look like a watch with a measuring stick on my eye? I don't know, man. I don't know what you're looking at, guys. <laughs> oh, anything he's else? He's six three. <laughs> anything else you wanted to add, to Kr? Well, only thing I want to add to Baker is I wish him all the luck. Because um, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure, so I'm pretty sure whatever he's requesting, <laughs> he's not gonna get no films, no. <laughs> just <laughs> like <don't> that. It. <laughs> and it, it, but the thing, I'm laughing, but I, I, it, it hurts my heart from the yeah. inside yeah, because because I do some I do some investing through my sugar mama, and I know how it how it hurts when. When someone dips with your with your money, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know it personally. I don't know it personally, but I can imagine how it hurts, how much it hurts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even more if it's your dad. Well, what you gonna do? You gonna slap your dad for the missing money? Yeah. If you do, Baker, make sure you record it. <laughs> so so others know you're you're a menace. Yeah. <laughs> hey, but but uh, all, all jokes aside, guys, it, it's uh, it's. I wish them all the luck because I think I don't think they have what they are requesting, and whatever they are requesting, if they have it, it might be manufactured. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. <clears throat> we'll see. And you? Cool. Yeah, I don't think I don't think it's gonna get uh, any money back. <laughs> I don't think so. Um, it's unfortunate, but yeah. Uh, maybe Baker. Baker, go out there and be somebody. Guys, with that being said, it's been a pleasure to serve you once more. Whatever your thoughts are, let us know in the comment section below. Remember to rate the show by pressing the like button, share the video with your friends, family, and enemies. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. It's been a pleasure to serve you once more, and we'll see each other in the next one. Till next time. Peace.